Welcome back, Alex. Do you want to talk about your time in Colorado? Let's start with something positive. What did you learn from your visit to Haven Springs? I thought I learned what it means to make a place your home. That must have felt like quite the victory. Let's talk about how it feels to know that you might have been wrong. I suppose I'm proud of you for trying. You helped some people. Chased a mystery. Got to kiss a pretty girl. But Alex, you're right back where you started. I know. Oh, you don't know anything, Alex. You don't even know you're not really here. What the fuck? Hey, my guitar. Knock, knock. How did I even get back here? Um, Alex Chen? My guitar case has never heard of me. Sure. Huh. These don't belong to Dr. Lin. A tuning peg. Dr. Lin always recorded our... records our sessions. Twelve years ago, I made a mistake. The kind of thing that you... you can't undo. Alex, you know that I care about you. With everything that has happened, I just want what's best for you. 
I guess that's me. Case number 53322. Thrown down a... what? I've got to... Of course. Gabe gave me this guitar, but he never heard me play it. Alex. Gabe? <gasps> You're dead. So? Lots of people are dead, Alex. Most people. Where are we? I want to say... a hospital? Dr. Mendez to intensive care? Dr. Mendez to intensive care. Yep, definitely a hospital. <laughs> Gabe. Okay, here's what I do know. You are 10, I am 14. Our mother is sick, so is our father. But it's a different kind of sickness. 
play your part. Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. She was right over there, waiting for me. We couldn't afford a private room. Just got lucky, I guess. There it is. The painting that taught me that art sucked sometimes. Gabe and I used to watch cartoons on this thing after school. Gabe? Alex? I need you to listen very carefully. We got some scary news today. And I'm going to be spending some time at the hospital. What? Mom, are you okay? Hush now. It's going to be okay. Do you understand me? Things will be different for a little while. But I am going to be okay. She knew. Even then, she knew. We spent so much time in here that... I basically memorized every article. Gabe told me it was full of needles. It scared me to death. It was always too hot in this room. She's just on the other side. There's something so weird and scary about watching your dad cry. How many nights did dad spend in this room, sleeping in an uncomfortable chair and eating vending machine dinners? Mom, every time I saw her, I worried it would be the last. Hi, Mom. 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 Such a brave girl. How do you ever get so brave? Is that how it went? You don't think you missed anything? Ow! Gabe, why? I didn't do anything. Stop. Both of you. Dad. Behave. <sighs> Alex, go check on your mother. Okay. Wait, did I miss something? No, 
matter how much mom drank, her throat was always dry. Hi, Mom. <coughs> Mom. Mom. Water, Alex. Get her some water. Thank you. You almost never cried, even when you were very small. Did you know that? That's been my biggest challenge with you. How do you take care of someone who is already so strong? No tears, my strong girl. I want you to make me a promise. Your brother, your father, they are going to need you. You have to be strong. Will you do that, Alex? <laughs> Such a brave girl. How do you ever get so brave?
Was that the last time you talked to her? Mom. I... I think so. Do you miss her? Gabe, what's going on? You're 11, I'm almost 15. Dad and I are time bombs. You keep running back and forth trying to defuse us both. This is going to suck so bad. Play your part. You know that's not how it went down, right? My job to keep the peace. But no matter, Gabe had barely used this backpack in weeks. Mom and Dad had this TV before they had either of us. I tried so hard to keep my promise to her. This was probably the most expensive thing we owned. Kind of kept me sane. Dad's laundry. I always, at least I managed to hold on to you, Shu Shu. Cleaning Dad's ashtray was not my favorite job in the world. It was full of greeting cards. Mom kept every single one we ever got. Thanks for trying, lucky cat. My job was to sort them in order of how close we were to a collections notice. I wanted to be a werewolf that Halloween. I can't believe they were ever this happy. Gabe used to steal Dad's beer all the time. It was like the one thing they didn't fight about. We never really touched these after mom died. She was such a good cook. 
two cups water for one cup rice. Set timer for 30 minutes. Do your history homework. Serve. Almost empty. Almost always. Hey Gabe, I'm Leslie Halloran. I'm from the Oregon State Child Protective Services. We got a call from someone who said there might have been some kind of fight here last night. Is your dad home? Oh gosh, you know what? We were, yeah, that, that was like um, rehearsal. And I'm in this play at school, and my dad, like he was um, helping me learn my lines. Must be some play. But if you need anything, my number is on there, okay? Gabe loved Son of Lead back when it was an indie. It was too gory for me. Mom's old sewing kit. Don't think I've ever even tasted a butter cookie. The killer mistress tabs in this book weren't even close to right. Gabe and Dad were so loud when they fought. Where are you going? Are you gonna tell her? Or is that my job? Keep your voice down. Fine, I'll do it. Alex. Dad lost his job, again. So we're broke, again. Don't talk to me that way. <laughs> Despite what you may believe, you do not know everything. You think what, I laid myself off? It's okay, we'll figure it out. I could, um. I don't know, Dad. But what are we supposed to do now? We gotta eat. We can sell some records, or, or what about my guitar? We can sell that? Alex. What is it gonna take to get you to stop defending him? If your mother could see you now. I don't wanna hear about mom. Gabe! I'm so tired of you using her as an excuse to be a piece of shit. <laughs> don't fucking touch me, piece of shit. Dad. <gasps> Damn it, Alex. I'm okay. It's okay. It was an accident. Alex, I... I, I, I didn't... Dad. Dad, it's okay. Really. I'm not hurt. <laughs> I can't do this. Dad? Someone will come. That woman from CPS. Someone. Dad. I'm sorry. No. Uh, no. no.
Hey, can I ask you a question? Which orphanage is this? The one in Grant Park? Kind of thought it'd be nicer. I can't do this, okay? I... I can't. You need to. No. You need to be honest about what you see. I was. I have. And now I'm done. Almost. But not yet. You are 12. I am 16. I steal a car and end up in juvie. Gabe, come on. Then you're 13, 14, 15. Orphanages, group homes, musty rooms in the strange houses of foster parents. By the time you're 17, you've seen them all. Somewhere along the line, you start to feel things. Your own emotions don't belong to you. You have nothing, no one. You are alone. I don't want this. Alex. Play your part. <sighs> Play my part. I used to write one every day. Stupid. Why? You clearly missed him. And I thought he missed me. Hence, stupid. How are you holding up, Shu? Can't believe how long you've had that thing. That thing was my only friend after you left. Guess I missed a few days. We weren't allowed. We weren't allowed. We weren't allowed to bring glass into the dorms. So we had to drink from this thing. Like hamsters in a cage. Except if you give a hamster a glass, they don't toss it at the other hamsters' heads. Pretty sure it's locked. Must be after curfew. We're not going anywhere. God, they put me on so many meds. Did any of them ever work? Some of them helped, a little. None of them fixed me. In their defense, mutant empathy isn't exactly in the DSM. They used to say this place wasn't a prison. Well, maybe they were trying to keep you safe? I guess so. Whatever the reason, the end result was prison bars. I took a fork in here one time and hid it under my mattress. Just cause, fuck you. They should have stenciled the same thing on all of us. You really feel like you were their property? We didn't belong to anyone else, did we? Fancy. Everyone had one good outfit. We wore them to meet the parents. Did it help? Kind of think you already know the answer to that question. I remember the kid who put this here. Sadie? Sally. Uh, something with an S? You were friends at first, right? Way at first. Then I freaked out on her and she was done with me just like everyone else. I don't understand. Why can't I have my guitar? We've been over this, Alex. Your guitar stays in the rec room. You can play it during free time. That's bullshit. I don't need it in the fucking rec room. I need it when I'm stuck in the fucking dorms. Alex, that's enough. Maybe we'll just take away your guitar privileges entirely, if that's what you prefer. You can't! 
can't do that! She's been through so much. I just don't know if we're prepared for a troubled girl. It says here she's sensitive. What is that? I wonder why she's never found a home before. She's a sweet girl, but she's not for us. She's awfully old, isn't she? This is the kid that's been in all those fights, right? <laughs> I want to help. I, I really do, but there's just something off, broken, wrong with her. <laughs> Sorry. Why? You need to see it. See what? That nobody picked me? Nobody picked you. Nobody picked you. Nobody wanted you. Mom died. Dad left. I bailed. You couldn't keep us together. It was my job to keep us- You were 11 years old. You were 11 years old. You were a kid, Alex. Let it go. People leave. Life gets hard. Sometimes it's a big shit sandwich. Make it better. Be angry at dad. Miss mom. Hell, be angry at me. But don't give up. No one gets to tell you what you're worth. And no one can take your life away. Fight. I'm not sure I... You have a gift. It's something you don't even understand. You can change the world. Make it better. Now get up. What? Get up and fight.
I've got to find a way out of here. No more ladder. Not that I'd be much good at climbing. Mines growing into mines, just like Jed said. I'm going to choose not to read anything into this. I could almost laugh, if it wouldn't hurt so much. How long has this stuff been down here? Alright boys, getting close. Hell divers for life, huh, Jed? Dig so deep we see where the devil sleeps. God damn right. This is it. This is what Typhon tried to bury. A lot of runoff moisture in this soil. Jed, we gotta call it. This dig is fucked. Nothing's fucked! Jed, we got no pumps running. No, my teams have never quit a dig this deep before. We finish the job. Steady goes. Steady. Fuck was... Move! Come on! Clear the tunnel! Who's on radio? Jed! Fuck! Jed! Jed! Oh my god. We gotta move! Now! There's still men back there! They'll drown! Yeah, and so will we if we don't get the fuck out! Make the call, Jed! God damn it! God damn it! Everyone, let's go! Now! <coughs> Smells like fireworks. Must be where Typhon blew the charges.
back! Jen, you son of a bitch! Jen, you gotta stop, man. Jen! Fuck you, Jen! Come back! It's over, Jen. He's not coming back. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And, during my time here, I've come to realize what makes Haven so special. It's a flower shop, run by multiple generations. A bar owner who greets every customer by name. It's a spring festival tradition going back a hundred years. History, loyalty, pride. These values which define Haven are the same values that Typhon was built on. And that is why our partnership has been so successful. It's been my privilege to renew Typhon's commitment to Haven. We believe in this community and we're tremendously excited for its future. Thank you, Diane. I think I speak for all of us when I say we're eager to make this official. So, time to vote, folks. And then lunch. I'm fine. You are not fine. We have to get you to a doctor. What happened to you? Don't worry about me. I'll be okay. Alex, you're hurt. <sighs> Do you need help? We can call an ambulance. Typhon's been lying to all of you. And so has Jed Lucan. Alex, what's going on? Fuck you. What the hell happened? I was down in the mine last night. I saw what Typhon's been hiding for 12 years. Jed Lucan isn't a hero. That whole story is a lie. Jed caused the accident. And then he abandoned seven of his men. He let them drown to save himself. There were pictures of me and Gabe down there in the dirt. Because one of those miners was my father. Typhon wanted to keep this covered up. 
in case it jeopardized the vote. Everyone at that company is scared to death. All they do is protect themselves. So they decided to bury the evidence and nothing was going to stop that blast. Not even the fact that there were four people up in the mountains. That's how Gabe was killed. Jed knew all along. He covered up the truth about the past, about Gabe. And when I found out, as you can see, he tried to kill me too. Why aren't any of you saying anything? We don't want to embarrass you, Alex. Try me. These accusations are... Well, they're insane. And trying to go into the mine was obviously a very dangerous, very illegal thing to do. But we all sympathize with your situation. You've been through so much. Your brother was your only family, wasn't he? I can only imagine how much you want an explanation for his loss. Something to give you comfort and... make your life seem less unfair. Why don't you just tell the truth? You've been planning your exit from Typhon anyway. What? You never signed up for threats or attempted murder. You hate this. Now's your chance to stop. Dad, do you have any idea what Alex is talking about? No, I don't. I've tried to be there for Alex since Gabe died. I thought, I don't know. I hoped I could be something of a father figure to her. All I can guess is, sometimes when we're hurting, the people we lash out at are the ones who are trying to help. This is an act. You're lying. Please. <sighs> I know this is hard to accept. You all trust him. I did too, but I'm telling the truth. I believe you. Of course I do. I believe you too. I'm horrified and shocked and Still processing everything, but I believe you. Miss Harmon, please remember the terms of your settlement. My son and I are relying on that money. Then you should know that a public change of stance will nullify the agreement. I would like to speak. This young lady came to Haven as a stranger, but over the last few weeks, she's become one of us. Now, her story certainly seems unlikely, if not impossible, but she deserves at least an investigation of her claims. We ought to take her seriously. Ducky, you're being unhelpful. Alex, sweetheart. You know our mind can play tricks on us. None of it is your fault. It's so hard 
to admit you need help. But struggling alone... No. You shouldn't have to go through that. We're all worried about you. Let us help you. How about you? I heard you out last night. You know the deal. Please. You're a cop. You can do something. Alex, just... just give it up. You coward. <clears throat> Believe me, right? Ryan? Why are you doing this? What? My dad is not a murderer. Were you afraid we couldn't get Typhon? Is that why you need someone else to blame? I thought we were in this together, for Gabe. Ryan. No. I'm not gonna let you do that to me anymore. Ryan, what the hell? I know he's your dad, but look at her. Why would she lie about this? It's going too far. Alex almost died. It's not true. Fuck you, Ryan! After everything? Seriously, fuck you! Stop. I know why you tried to kill me. It's not what you tell yourself. That you thought it was best for Haven. This was never about Haven at all, was it? This was about you. I know it's easier not having to think about the men you buried. You want to look away and pretend the people you hurt aren't people. But I won't let you. My father worked for you. His name was John. The world never gave a shit about him. He was always struggling just to get by. He still hoped one day things would be better. But you killed him. And then Gabe. My big brother. Haven was his second chance. He was so proud of who he'd become. A great boyfriend. A cool dad. But he died. Because of you. And then there's me. For so many years, I just wanted to survive, to get through. They even changed me. I started to think about the future. Playing on stage yesterday was one of the best moments I can remember. 
Gabe knew that about me. He knew that if I could just play, just let myself love something, then one day I could be happy. And you tried to murder me. You would have ended my life just so you wouldn't have to face the truth. Forgotten it, haven't you? You've plastered over it with another story. You tell yourself you're a good man. You take care of so many people. You gave me a roof and a job. You checked on me when I was grieving. Such a good, generous man. But that's the lie. If you scrape it away, what do we see? 11 years ago, you led a group of men to their deaths. And you couldn't even say those words out loud because you're a coward. You couldn't imagine saying it to your wife, saying it in front of your son. Every day you were brave enough to go underground and look death in the eye, but you couldn't muster the courage to admit a mistake. I can feel you trying to pull away. Don't. The truth hurts. Sometimes it's so awful you think you're gonna break. But when you come out the other side and you're whole and free and still alive, then you'll finally know how strong you really are. see the truth about you. You hate yourself. You hate what you did in the past. You hate what you've done to keep it secret. And the more you deny that hatred, the worse it grows. I know who you are. I've seen the worst parts of you. And I forgive you. And the news is still coming in on the Titan mining scandal that has rocked the western slope town of Haven Springs, where a council meeting was the scene for shocking revelations. Local bar owner and council president Jed Lucan admitted in a tearful confession to covering up the deaths of seven Titan employees as their manager 12 years ago. A recent cover-up, which involved a clandestine and unpermitted explosion to thwart inspections, caused the death of Haven local Gabe Chen last month. 
Mr. Lukin is currently in police custody, awaiting arraignment. We will have plenty more about this developing story, including the resignation of Typhon's CEO, the market impact, and what it all means for your drive time commute coming right... Yeah, the silence is worse. I need to get some air. Do I need a Charlotte Harmon portrait? I kind of think I need a Charlotte Harmon portrait. I've got some continued support for you. The phrase recent events is doing some work in this post. It never ends. I'm so sorry I worried you all. I bet Steph wishes she could reward that, but it's pretty funny. After summoning all my strength and willpower, I'm now ready to move from the bed to the rooftop. I know now that my inaction in the face of injustice was itself a terrible wrong. And I know that I will never be able to undo the tremendous pain and loss I caused I do not ask for forgiveness. The only person who could give that to me is, is gone. Thank you. There are no victories at the end of this. Just more painful truths. I'm glad he held on to it. 
for whatever it's worth. Couldn't bring himself to get rid of it. You ever swing a pick before, Mr... Chen, John, and no. But I, I'm a hard worker, and I learn fast, and I don't mind long hours. You don't have somebody waiting on you at home? No, sir. Well, John, guess you're a hell diver now. Must be rare that a local paper gets to break out the really big headline. See? This is why I try to only read the art sections. Berlin does sound pretty good right about now. I've been playing a lot the last two days, trying to think things through, but I realize it's actually the opposite. When I'm playing is the only time I get to not think. Not think about Jed, or Gabe, or Haven, and wanting to move on from the pain, but not knowing how. Most of all, what I don't think about is me, because I've never been good at that. And suddenly, it's the only question that's left. So, I just keep playing. Maybe Dad deserved everything he got, but I'm still glad we were there with him in his last moments. I love this guitar, but if it starts asking me riddles again, I'm throwing it out the window. They say I was powered by adrenaline that whole morning. Now I'm mostly powered by extra strength Advil and these. Good thing I sold off all my Typhon stock. I'm pretty sure my voice was already heard by everyone who needed to hear it. Is it weird that the part of this that bothers me the most is nondescript dive bar? I felt very close to Ducky after our dance. I guess he felt the same way.
Hey, Steph. Alex, wait. Before you say anything, I have to get this out. Okay. What you did at the council meeting, it was the bravest thing I've ever seen. And it made me want to be brave too. So, here it goes. I want to be with you. I don't give a shit about playing music or seeing the world. I mean, I do, but only if it's with you. And if you'd rather stay here instead, then... <sighs> Fuck it. <laughs> I want to stay here too. You ripped your bus ticket. <laughs> I can get another one. Or not. It, it doesn't matter. Point is, I'm in. For whatever you want. You've, uh, given me a lot to think about. Well, good. That was the idea. You know where to find me. Good luck, Chen. Thanks, Steph. All right, just tell me. What? My future. What to do? The night of the spring fest, Steph made a strong push for leaving with her. Playing on the road, the excitement of the unknown. Of course. That was before all the shit went down. <laughs> Come on, you're the know-it-all. So tell me. Actually, I do know what you should do. You should stay in Haven. <laughs> of course, you're right. I've never had a home before. Friends, a job, a place to live. Why would I give that up now? <sighs> then again, maybe leaving would be better. What? You're young, you suddenly have a little money, friends. And don't you think it's time to give this music thing a real shot? No, you should definitely leave. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Stop it, Gabe. I don't need the mysterious spirit bullshit right now. I just need... I just need my big brother. I'm sorry. I know. But here's something. It's three hours from now. A bus pulls away. You're not on it. And neither is Steph. Life goes on. You get a job working with Steph at the record store.
all those years of being a music snob finally pay off. And little by little, time does its thing. The apartment starts to feel less like a museum and more like a home. Thoughts of Jed, of Typhon, even of me begin to fade into the background. Top is your stage. You perform every week to a small but adoring group of fans. Maybe while you play, you wonder what could have been. Performing for more people in more cities, sharing your music with the world. Or maybe you never think about that much at all. You don't know exactly when it happens, but one day you look around and find that you have transformed this place just as much as it has transformed you. And the most extraordinary thing of all is just how normal it feels. You don't question it, you don't doubt it, or wonder what might have been. It's your life, the life you fought so hard to have. And for the first time in a long time, you just live. Thank you. Don't mention it. You really think I'll transform Haven? Of course. You already have. With your gift, your music, just by being you. But Alex, that doesn't mean you have to stay. You have the potential to do that anywhere you go. Do what exactly? Become an actual musician? Live in a van? Travel between dingy bars, hawking your SoundCloud, <laughs> pouring your soul to strangers. Sounds pretty great if you ask me. The truth is, there's no telling what that version of your future might be. The only promise is the adventure. So, what do you think? I know what I want.
kept my heart closed Thought it easier to handle it If I was on my own But you taught me Some things are worth the risk Nothing comes too easily When joy is dangerous I've had my fair share of losing Joy is dangerous